Okay, so for those of you that stuck around, thanks. I'm going to be super awkward and uncomfortable because I have been encouraging my leaders to tell real vulnerable stories. And that means that I have to do that as well, right? So, here we go. We're going to start back at the beginning. Um, how many of you know how I got started in this whole stuff? Yeah, Kim, Kim does. Uh, so we'll, we'll go back to when I met Kim. Um, I was in a corporate sales manager job, killing it, and super bored. I mean, I was mostly killing it, most of the time I was losing to Karen, but when she wasn't there, I was killing it. <laughs> um, and I was bored, and I thought, I can't do the same thing for the rest, for the next 30 years. I was at the salary cap, I was driving a lot, I thought, well, I don't even have any marketable skills. All I know how to do is teach people how to sell stuff. So I put up a little, a little podcast, and I was tinkering around on my lunch break, and I ran into one of our neighbors, and she invited me to a class. So I said, I'll come to your class, and this is my podcast. I didn't know what an essential oil was, any of this. So she said yes. I went to the class, and... Um, <laughs> Kim's just laughing, that'll just... How, how would you describe that class, Kim? I was the only one who showed up. And how many wellness advocates showed up? Two. No, there was one more. Catherine had a new person. Oh, there was three. Yeah, there was three rotating around. We played uh, bingo. We played bingo, we got to go over there. So I won. <laughs> <laughs> And Haley was melting down, shocking. And um, I enrolled, and so did Catherine. <laughs> and we started coaching, and she started selling stuff. And then uh, Kim hired me too. Yes. It's okay to say. You can say that. Okay. Because I, I didn't know that she was coaching and did any kind of coaching really. I just knew that she was Catherine Goodbye. Yeah. At the class. Uh, so then Kim enrolled 12 people in a month, and then her upline hired me, and then that person's upline hired me, and then everything just kind of went absolutely insane from there. And I didn't think it would. So I'm just going to give you some context. Uh, and these numbers, because there's kind of like a sob story really in the middle here, um, but I just need you to understand. So that first year when I met Catherine and Kim, my revenue was $600. Um, then I uh, did a really smart thing and I quit my job. And for four months, I sold no more than $700. And then I hired my coach. And the rest of that year, we ended up doing a little over $80,000, and I thought that was really cool. And then the next year, we did $1.4 million. And it broke me. And so this is, this is a different part of the story than I have yet shared publicly. Uh, if you're around during that time, you saw it. Um, it was crazy in so many ways. Uh, but while we were growing, I couldn't think straight. I could coach, that wasn't a problem. But I didn't, I'd never run a coaching company. Have you guys ever run a coaching company? It's really hard. <laughs> And what happened, while all of that best time in my life, most money I would ever made, all these amazing things, I ran into this thing called imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Many of you heard of it before? Mm -hmm. It's this feeling that you were going to be found out to be a fraud, which is what I was convinced was going to happen every day. And so while imposter syndrome was running my business, I made a lot of mistakes uh, from a business perspective. Now, from a client perspective, everyone was awesome, right? Everyone got what they needed. People were rank advising. People that took direct sales foundation on average tripled enrollment. You've heard all the stats. I've started coaching two diamonds and presidential diamonds. And um, I was always terrified that it was all going to fall apart. And I was pretty sure at some moment, any moment, everyone was going to find out that I was just a fraud. And it was really, really hard. And guess what happened? I got sick. I got really sick. And then all of those imposter syndrome decisions where then imposter syndrome and prednisone went out and had a party. 
and we made some more bad decisions, or not bad decisions, but the timing wasn't right. And our clients are still doing great. So the next year we did uh, $1.2 million, but because I had made so many decisions, we lost a lot of money. And in many ways, there, was, there were question marks in 2018 on whether or not Murder would survive. 2018. Is that crazy for those of you that have been around? And in fact, the first half of this year, there were still question marks on whether or not we would make it through. All the while, last gala, gala, gala? I don't know. 128 emerged students walked. some people experience in their business, but I think there are some similarities where the lessons that I have learned pull us out of it. Um, I no longer feel those things. I think we're a bit out of the woods, as Tim Oswald would say. Maybe, <laughs> or we're just asking maybe, are we out of the woods yet? Um, when I picked the name Emerge, I picked it very, very intentionally. Uh, you guys seen The Princess Bride? Yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes, it's the best movie ever. Are you kidding me? You have not? <laughs> cannot get through five minutes. Oh. Oh. You know, Carrie and I fight on camera over and over and over and over and over. Okay. So there's this scene where he's leaning over, right? And he's pulling, pulling the guy where Wesley's climbing. And I always imagined that that's what I wanted to be able to do for people. That I would just throw them the rope and they would come up. And I always have this picture of Wesley coming over the mountain to be merging. And so we, I came up with that name, that's what I wanted to do for people. And I thought I would get to sit in my ivory tower because I knew all these things, I was so smart. And then I would leave my ivory tower and I would come down and I would help people and lift them up. And I would say, it's okay that you fell down. Let's just all get back up together. And then I'd go off to my ivory tower and everything would be great. And I think God had a different idea. I think he wanted to see what could I emerge? Right? Could, could I get up? And so here we are, we're up. Uh, we have a super bright future ahead of us. We're very, very excited about all of the things that uh, we are doing. And uh, I want to share with you some of the lessons that, that I've learned over the past year because I think they're really going to help you. Um, if you're in this room, I have, I'm going to assume that your calling is strong. Right? Like you have this thing inside you that's like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But then you're like, why am I getting kicked in the teeth? And I remember talking to a client and I said, where is God? Like, this is so hard. He wants me to do this thing. But what's going on? And she said, what makes you think he's not there? And so I had to take a step back and I had to look. And what I want to share with you are the four biggest mistakes I'm going to do my own exercise from uh, Recruit Like a Boss, and I'm going to share with you my four biggest make mistakes and the lessons that I want you to leave with. And then I'm going to drink that glass of wine and tell you. <laughs> okay. So, number one mistake, I make decisions out of fear. Fear of missing out. That is a bad place to make decisions. It's come up in a few side conversations I want to save it to address it for this speech. If your question starts with should I, it's probably a question based in fear. And I was so afraid of losing everything that I built that I made all of my decisions coming from that place. And I tried to do all the things to fix them all at the same time. Every time I would have an idea, I would learn something, I would, I would hear something, I'm like, well, we could do that. And I would try to implement all the things. So I will not look at Karen right now, she gives me dagger eyes. Um, we try to do all the same, all the things because I didn't want to miss out. Every idea was a good idea. And maybe it would be the one that would help us to figure this thing out. And what I wrote down in the lesson is that even if it's a great idea, 
It just might not be a good idea right now. When I look back at the strategic decisions I made, they were all really good ideas. It just wasn't the right time to implement and execute them. I want you to start making your decisions from a different place. Ask yourself, what would a leader whose success is assured decide? Because if you really do believe that you're gonna do this, and you really do believe God has a calling on your life, then that means your success and your victory is assured, right? Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Then we don't have to make decisions out of fear because even if the decision is wrong, our success is still assured. And we can shift where we come from that decision and make it from a place of power as someone who knows they'll be successful as opposed to someone who's afraid of losing everything. Second mistake, I did not know my superpower. I only saw everybody else's. I saw what that person did really well, what that person did really well, what that person did really well, and whatever I did, I just thought everyone knew how to do. And so I thought, I don't even know if anyone's gonna want this thing because it just seems to do this thing. The thing about our superpowers, we do it like, it's like breathing time. And so we don't realize it's intuitive. I didn't know that everyone couldn't write sales training. And so I placed no value on it. I didn't know that people couldn't just make up stuff on a Zoom call and it would work. I thought I was making it up, but it happened to be years of, intu years of expert intuition. And so I placed no value on it. And because I placed no value on my skills, everything was confusing. And so when we were growing, I said, all the other people can do this better. All step back. All hide, I guess. And then that way, I don't have to worry about it. And I think that in many ways, you know, some of, some of you might be hiding behind your builders. And it might be because of this. And so uh, my lesson that I want to share with you is first know your superpower, please see a coaching program. <laughs> um, I had done superpower exercise, for those of you who know what it is, taking your five top talents, summarizing them into how to build trust, compassion, stability, and hope for dozens of people before I did mine. And uh, when I finally did it, I was like, wait a second, that's pretty good. <laughs> I should use that for something. And the change we had to make is that I had to bet on myself and my superpower. Um, that was really the only way, because it's my company. And so instead of hiding my superpower, I had to just fully step in. Uh, this year, uh, January 22nd, I don't remember. Uh, there may have been many, many glasses of wine and a beach uh, there. And we made the decision that I would go 100% back into the field to get back on Zoom seven hours a day. And that's what we did. Because we bet on our superpower, which was the phone. And it worked. And so I want you guys to know your superpower, and I want you to bet on it. Uh, because that's what we can control. Uh, number three mistake. I tried to do all the things at the same time. Because I was smart, I had capacity, um, but I wasn't really going anywhere. Uh, one of my talents is maximizer and my team is stress. It wants to tinker with everything. And so the shift we made is we had a number one priority. We ranked them. I think we were talking today about, should I do a Facebook group? Should I do a this? And I said, well, what's your number one priority? And what we did is we said, okay, 100% what is our best product? It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the big strategic mistake that I made was I pulled one-on-one -on -one coaching off the product list because direct sales numbers were more profitable. It makes a lot of sense now that that was a bad decision 
But if you do the math, right, $300 times 50 people times eight weeks, that's good. That's much better than one-on-one -on -one rates. But we lost our stability, and it's one-on-one -on -one is our most transformational product. And so I gasped, committed to one-on-one -on -one coaching all the way through next year to make that the best thing we can do because nobody can do it. You can try to duplicate direct sales foundation, but you cannot duplicate our team. Which means that we'll win, right? Because no one else is willing to do that. And so we picked a number one priority, we executed, we reflected, and we did it again. And we got better and better and better and keep getting better and better at it. And the fourth one is probably the biggest one. I told you guys I would write a book this year, right? It's not happening. <laughs> I started writing three different ones when I told you guys, and I didn't like any of the topics. I think I found one. And I don't know what to call it, but here's the concept. Uh, work to provide value instead of trying to prove your value. So the biggest mistake I made is I tried, because I suffered from this imposter syndrome, I tried to prove that I was everyone everything that people said I was. And I was, I was joking with AJ on our team the other day. I said, aren't we all just trying to live up to the hype of Tasha? Because my hype is just as hard for me to live up to as it is for my team. And what I found myself in was this place of trying to prove something. Prove I was smart, prove I was this, prove I was that. And that brought me nowhere. And it didn't, it didn't come to me until uh, Karen sent over a possible one-on-one -on -one client. I said, hi, it's nice to meet you. What do you know about me? She says, I heard you create presidential diamonds. So say that to someone with imposter syndrome and puts them in the hospital. And so I tried to prove to her how smart I was. Now, thank God, it's Karen's deal to deal with people to talk to, otherwise that would have been a disaster. And I found myself trying to prove to her that I was that person. And I found myself that I was always trying to do that. The first person that said, why don't you just run a doTERRA business? You know how much money you could make? And I found myself trying to say, well, you don't think I make that already? <laughs> And it wasn't because of anything except that I was like, I own Emerge. And I found like this, this trap because I couldn't think straight of, okay, well, I need to prove I have a lot to prove. Instead of uh, the coaching call after that call, I, I met up with one of my previous clients who I had coached for a year. And we're on, um, we're on a call, and her computer keeps beating. Don't you guys hate that? I'm trying to have a Zoom call and your computer keeps beating. And I said, hold on a second. Uh, can I have control? And she laughed. I said, let me have control of your screen. And I, um, I disable all of her notifications. And she's a presidential diamond. And she said, this has been the best coaching call you've ever had. <laughs> and I realized that we don't have to try to prove our value. We just need to provide it. We need to sit in the space with the person and figure out what challenges are they having and what do they need right now and what, what she needed right then was to be able to think was to not have that dinging happen over and over and over again on Zoom calls with hundreds of people on them. Because when that ding goes off, it, it kind of messes with your brain and you actually think you're being attacked by a lion. It's the same neurotransmitter. And so what that means is that every time my client, who's a little crazy, the one I'm thinking about, she's pretty intense, um, when she would speak, their team thought, they were being attacked by lion. And so we fixed that, and things got better. And I realized that I didn't have to do that anymore. I, I still slip into it, right, because I don't think imposter syndrome goes away. But what I want to do is I want to encourage you to just check that. 
before you talk to someone. Um, I was at Thursday. I did it again, guys. I, I did an event for a client, and the owner came in and said, I'm so glad you guys are doing this. You're in such good hands. I know that Tasha's going to kill it, and I felt like I was going to throw up. And it's like I found myself in that same place of trying to prove my value. And I just want to encourage you to stop that, right? Like, your best is good enough, right? When I, when I sit there, and this is kind of my last thought, because they're going to talk to this up, is, you know, sometimes I'll say, am I doing enough? God, am I doing enough? And then you know what? Every time, your best is enough. And as you go into the next few days of the convention, um, you may run into these things, right? These mistakes, these landmines are waiting for you at convention. So is all the inspiration and the excitement and the enthusiasm and the vision and the belief. You know what else is there? Fear of missing out, other people's superpowers, all the things I could be doing and trying to prove something while you're here. And all of those things are here, and I want to let you know that there are other ways, and I hope that if any of this disaster, um, I think that we're on the right path, I'm, I'm excited about what's happening, but I wouldn't be practicing what I, what I coach if I didn't share some of that with you guys tonight so that it um, helps you as well. So I want to let you know that your best is enough, uh, you will get better. Um, just follow these lessons and improve your skills like we talked about today, right? Improve your strategy, improve your skills. It's not that you're not enough, it's probably that you suck at that thing or your strategy is terrible. It's not that you're not enough, it's the strategy, it's the skill, it's the, right? It's that stuff, it's not you. And the good thing about the strategy and the skill is it can be learned and it can be fixed over time. Whatever you are, if you just bet on yourself, you're going to do just fine. If you start going down this other path on the left side of my page here, that's when you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. Uh, so those are my last thoughts. That's what I wanted to end with today. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you. I'm going to go drink that glass of wine as quickly as possible. Um, and I